Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon all of you. I'd like to welcome you to this episode of The Best in Islam. In this episode, we'll be looking at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger have declared to be the best in human society, in the world, in the affairs and the actions of human beings. And in this particular episode, we'll be looking at who were considered to be the best of the believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated in Surah Al-An'am verse 110 You are the best of people ever raised up for humankind. You command the good, forbid the evil, and you believe in Allah. So this statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran describes the best of humankind. What makes them the best? That they believe in Allah. So we're talking about the believers. However, there are two characteristics which Allah has added to make the believers the best. These characteristics, those who possess them, become the best of humankind and the best of those who would believe. Those characteristics are first and foremost commanding the good and secondly prohibiting the evil. And the term which Allah uses in the Quran for good, ta'muruna bil ma'roof, you command what is known to be good. Al ma'roof, what is known? Why does Allah use the term what is known and not just merely say they command the good, al khair? Because what is being stressed here when Allah speaks about humankind, you are the best. You, the believers, are the best nation, group, community, raised up from the totality of humankind who know what is good. We are born with a sense of good and bad, right and wrong, righteousness and evil. We are given that. This is imprinted in our souls, which is why Allah Describe the human soul saying, فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَهَا That Allah has inspired that human soul to know what is corruption and to know what is righteousness and goodness. So, first and foremost, Allah gave the characteristic of commanding the good priority. That we have a duty. Wherever we see what is wrong, to advise others, to try to correct it as we are able. And the Prophet, may God's peace and blessing be upon him, he gave it different levels. He said, Man ra'a minkum munkaran biyadi. Whoever amongst you sees an evil, should prevent it with his hand. He commands the good by preventing the evil with his own hand. When? When he is in a position of authority. And if he is unable, a person is not in a position, they're not in authority to stop an evil, to command what is good, then they should speak out against that evil. And if they're still unable, then the least they can do 
is dislike it in their hearts. And that is the lowest level of faith. For somebody who only has that option, it is not the lowest level of faith. It is the product of faith. But for those who have the ability to stop it with their hands or to speak out against it, but they avoid that and only hate it in their hearts, then for them, that is the lowest level of faith. So we are commanded to fear Allah to command the good to the degree that each and every one of us is able. What is required of rulers is not required of those who follow them. Each level of society has their level of good which they are required to command. And that comes with the general responsibility for each and every human being, which was expressed by the Prophet, may God's peace and blessing be upon him, in the hadith in which he said, Kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'ulun an ra'iyati. Each and every one of you is a shepherd responsible for his or her flock. We all have responsibilities to ensure that the good takes place. What is good? What is right? We have the responsibility to ensure that it takes place and to prevent what is evil, what is harmful. That's why the other section was added, We have to prohibit the evil. That has to go along with commanding the good because to command the good and not prohibit the evil, is to give evil a chance to overcome that good. It's not enough in a society, in a community, in a home, to only command what is good, demand that what is good is done. But evil takes place and nothing happens. No one says anything about it. That is not good. That is harmful. So. These two are two halves of a whole. Commanding the good, prohibiting the evil. The one supports the other. The more good you command, the greater chance that evil will be prohibited. But we don't leave the prohibition of evil to chance. We have to engage ourselves also in prohibiting the evil. So as a parent, for example, when you tell children the good things that they should do when they go to school, they should listen to their teachers. When they play with their friends, they should share. At the same time, we have to tell them in the school, you should not treat your fellow students badly. You should not cheat or you should not lie to your teacher so we prohibit those things which are not good for them similarly when they're playing with their friends when we tell them on one hand share commanding the good we should also tell them not to take the property of others which is the evil evil that could possibly occur not to speak badly of others, to avoid gossip, to avoid slander. Speak well. We command the good. Avoid evil speech. We prohibit the evil. And if we look at the various pillars of Islam, we see that they're all geared towards commanding the good, developing the good. And prohibiting the evil elements in our lives. Salah, which is the backbone of the Muslim's day-to-day -day life. When Allah describes the purpose, the value of Salah, He said, إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ That Salah 
prevents evil speech and evil deeds. So it is preventing, prohibiting the evil. How does it do that? Well, when we pray, we only pray using the words which Allah has prescribed for us through the Messenger. He has told us what we should say in our prayer. And all of the things that we say in our prayer are good things. So we are being restricted from saying anything bad. And if we make any personal additions to our prayers, supplications that we might add here or there, again, these are for good. So the prayer prevents us from evil speech. We're not allowed, we're not able to engage in evil speech. You cannot commit slander or backbite, gossip, these kinds of things. There's no room for it in the prayer. So this is training us to avoid these things. And on the other hand, we know that the prayer's primary purpose was to remember Allah, to be conscious of Allah. And this is why Allah said, أقم الصلاة لذكري Establish the prayer for my remembrance. In order that we may remember Allah. We'll continue this subject after a small break. Don't you want to experience the joy of teaching your child to read and write? Are you tired of paying someone to teach your child? Would you like to see your child reading and writing in just four lessons? As a certified reading specialist and experienced educator of more than 30 years, I can and will help you reach your goals, inshallah. I want you to experience the joy of teaching your child to read and write. I want to save you money, and I want to hear from you that your child is reading and writing in just four easy lessons. So don't delay. Start today. Assalamu alaikum. I would like to welcome you, dear viewers, back from the break. Prior to the break, we were looking at the prayer with regards to commanding the good and prohibiting the evil. And we had said that Allah had described the purpose of prayer as that of remembering Allah. Aqim al salah li dhikri, establish the prayer in order that you may remember me. What is the purpose of that remembrance? The purpose of that remembrance is that we would be commanded by that remembrance to do good. Because when we remember Allah, we seek to do good. If we were going to do evil, that remembrance of Allah helps us to stay on the right path, to avoid that evil. So this is the significance, this is the importance of remembrance of Allah. And that's why, for example, alcohol is prohibited. Because it causes us to forget Allah. When we forget Allah because we're intoxicated, then we do things that we wouldn't even imagine we could do. Some of the worst and most heinous of crimes are committed in states of intoxication. So the remembrance of Allah is for commanding the good. So all of the various practices of Islam, whether it is giving zakah, giving charity, that is the good being implemented commanding ourselves to do good, encouraging others to do good, or it is the pilgrimage to Mecca, sacrificing to commemorate the good of Prophet Abraham, to bring that goodness into our lives, to recognize the sacrifices of his wife, Hajar, and bring that type of sacrifice into our lives also the good that comes from it. So the whole of Islam is about commanding the good and prohibiting the evil. 
We will look at now another statement of the Prophet on the matter of the believers and who is the best among them. Abu Huraira quoted the Prophet, may God's peace and blessing be upon him, as saying, Al Mu'minul Qawi khayrun wa ahabbu ila Allahi min al Mu'min al Da'if wa fi kullin khayr. The strong believer is better and more beloved to Allah than the weak believer, though there is good in both. The strong believer is more pleasing to Allah than the weak believer. What does this mean? Is it physical strength or is it strength of faith? Scholars looking at this said it's both. We should be physically strong. If you're physically strong, you're able to do things that those who are physically weak are unable to do. So there is good in having strength. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was strong. He wrestled with his companions. There are narrations about him being challenged by some of the top wrestlers of Arabia and him wrestling and defeating them. So Prophet Muhammad May God's peace and blessing be upon him, was a strong man also. And weakness, physical weakness, where it produces weakness in faith or weakness in doing good or in prohibiting evil, then obviously that lessens the value of that believer. So the strong believer, physically, but even more importantly, spiritually, is more beloved to Allah. That means that we should strive for the pinnacle of faith. Our goal should not be just to believe, just to get by, that we may be called Muslims, believers. That shouldn't be our goal, because if we fall short of that goal, then we have missed the boat altogether. So our goal should be the highest. We should strive to be the best, to be strong in faith, and to do the things which make us strong in faith. Because by saying that the strong believer is better than the weak believer, we are encouraged then to do those things which will make our faith strong. Those things begin with knowing Allah through revelation, through what the Prophet Sallallahu has informed us through the verses of the Quran, through being around the believers, the stronger believers, that helps to strengthen our faith, through doing as much good as we can, doing righteous deeds. This increases our faith, avoiding evil deeds, which decrease our faith. The more evil deeds we do, the weaker our faith becomes. So that weak believer, spiritually weak believer, is one who may be engaged in many evil deeds. So obviously he's not going to be, or she is not going to be, very pleasing to Allah. So what does that mean? It means then that we should strive to be strong believers in Allah. So that if we are caught up in some errors, sins, etc., we may fall from that state of being a truly strong believer to being a pretty strong believer. That's good. It's okay. Better that than being a weak believer. Who, when he or she falls, they fall into disbelief. Now, the Prophet, may God's peace and blessing be upon him, went on to say that in both of them, there is good. The belief, the fact that they are believers, that in and of itself is good. Whether strong or weak, having that characteristic means that there is good in both. Even that weaker believer is still good. As the Prophet, may God's peace and blessing be upon him, had said, Man qala la ilaha illallah, dakhla al jannah. Whoever states sincerely, Believing, understanding that there's no God worthy of worship but Allah, 
will enter paradise. Maybe they will be punished for some time. They may end up in hell for some time. However, they will ultimately make it to paradise. So belief is, in fact, the key. The key to success in both this life and the next. But as the Prophet وسلم, encouraged us here, we should strive to be the strongest of believers. That should be our goal. He then went on to say, cherish what benefits you. Seek help from Allah and do not despair. Cherish what benefits you. Meaning, ihris is what the term he used. You know, look out for, seek out what is beneficial to you. Things which are not beneficial, it's better you avoid them. They're not going to help you. So focus on that which is beneficial. That is what's going to strengthen your faith. And do not despair. Do not feel that any mistakes that you have made cancels your faith, etc. No. By not despairing, having trust in Allah, having hope in Allah, that keeps our faith strong. If a calamity befalls you, do not say, if only I had done that, it would have been like that. If only. Avoid if only. Instead say, Qadarullah wa ma sha'a fa'al. It is the destiny of Allah and He does what He wishes. For surely if opens the door for Satan. This if only, I wish I had, I should have, going into all of that. No, it's done. It is Allah's destiny that what has taken place has taken place. So leave it. Yes, learn if you've made a mistake from it. You learn from that mistake. But don't dwell on, oh, if only, if only, if you hadn't said this, if you hadn't done that, if only. You know, that just ruins your life. And it's the door through which Satan creates confusion in people's mind, puts them in a state of despair, puts them in a state of fear and, and weakness, depression. All of it comes from that. So we avoid the ifs, if only. Instead, accept, it has happened. We shouldn't have done it, yes. I shouldn't have done it. It's done now, let me now try to make the best of it. Correct whatever is wrong, improve, better, whatever. That strengthens faith. That builds faith. Accepting the destiny of God in our lives. And with that, dear viewers, we'd like to thank you for being with us in this episode of The Best in Islam. And we hope to see you in our coming episodes, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.